So now we're going to do workshop J, the acceleration gearbox, and we're going to do experiment 9, starting the helicopter. So you're going to need a lot of different pieces, so I suggest getting them out before you start, and you're going to need the propeller from experiment 1. So starting with image A, you're going to take a short frame and you're going to stick it inside of a long rod and you want the side with the hole that's closer to the end facing up. So you're going to stick it in, leaving two holes on either side. Then you're going to stick two large frames into the short frame, one on the very end and one in the third hole from the end, so leaving one hole in between. Then you're going to stick four anchor pins in each of the corners up here on the large frames. Then you're going to take a medium axle, a large yellow gear, a long axle, an axle lock, a small yellow gear and two washers. And now we're ready to move on to image B. So in image B you're going to take the medium axle and with the stop on the right side you're going to put it through the fourth hole from the top, so one, two, three, four. So leaving three holes empty, you're going to put it through. Then you're going to push it through a large yellow gear. So you're going to have to slide this gear into here. Then you're going to add a washer and then you're going to push the axle through the opposite hole in the other large frame. So it looks like this. Then you're going to take the long axle and with the stop on your left side you're going to leave three holes empty from here. So one, two, three and then in the fourth hole stick the long axle in. And in between here, you're going to add a small yellow gear. So you might want to turn it around like this so you can see it. And then you're going to push it through the opposite hole in the other large frame. And push it all the way through. And now we're going to move on to image C. So you're going to take a small yellow gear and you're going to stick it onto this medium axle right here. And then you're going to take another small frame and attach it to another long rod in the same way as before. So you want the side with the hole that's closer to the end facing up. And then you're going to stick the short frame in, making sure that you have two holes empty on both sides right here. And then you're going to take two anchor pins. You're going to put one of them in this corner hole and you're going to put the other one in the third hole from the top, so leaving two holes empty right here. And now we're going to move on to image D. And in image D, you're going to take this piece and you're going to stick it on top of the setup. So you're going to line up these two short frames. And now we can move on to image E. And in image E, we're actually going to turn this like this and we're going to take a short rod and we're going to stick two anchor pins inside of it, one on the end hole and one in the fifth hole from the other end. So one, two, three, four, five, and then stick it right in. So now we can move on to image F. And in image F, we're going to stick this short rod onto here. We're going to line it up with this small frame. Then we're going to get a long rod, a medium axle, and a large yellow gear. And now we can move on to image G. So in image G, we're going to take this long rod, and you want to have the side with the hole that's farther from the end facing you, and you're going to attach it right onto these two anchor pins, and you want there to be one hole that's empty on the bottom right here. So you're going to stick it in the second hole from the bottom right here and then in the third hole from the top. So it looks like this. Then you're going to take a medium axle and with the lock on your left side 
you're going to push it through the bottom hole of this long rod, push it right through, and then stick this large yellow gear onto it. And then you're going to get another large yellow gear and another medium axle. And with the lock on the bottom, you're going to stick it right into the large yellow gear. And then you're going to stick a washer onto it. You're also going to need another washer and another small gear. And now we're ready to move on to image H. And in image H, you're going to take this setup and push it up through the fourth hole from the end. You might have to push this axle back a little in order to get it up. You're going to push it up here and then you're going to stick a washer onto it and the small yellow gear. And then you can take your propeller and stick it onto this long axle up here. Then you're going to need the large pulley wheel and the crankshaft. And now we're ready to move on to image I. So in image I, you're going to stick the large pulley wheel onto this medium axle. And you can push it in a little further. And then you're going to stick the crankshaft into one of these holes right here. Alright, so now we are done with the setup. And you want to make sure that everything is meshing correctly and you can use axle locks to secure things in place. So I'm going to actually stick an axle lock right here. And you can put an axle lock under the propeller if you find that it's falling down. So this large gear should mesh with this large gear. And you can move this gear forward or backwards or move this gear up or down depending on what you need. You want to make sure that this large yellow gear is meshing with this small yellow gear. You want to make sure that this large yellow gear is meshing with this small yellow gear. And you can tell that everything's working if the propeller is spinning. So now that we have our acceleration gearbox, we can move on to experiment 9, starting the helicopter. So you're actually going to want to turn the propeller upside down. So you're going to take it off, turn it upside down, make sure that the creases are well folded and then you're going to stick it back onto the axle and again if you feel like it's slipping down you can stick an axle lock underneath it you might have to fidget a little to get it steady and then once you have it like this you can start turning the crank keeping one hand on one foot of the gearbox framework to hold it steady and if it feels loose and it's not meshing perfectly feel free to add axle locks wherever you might need them and now we can turn the crankshaft again.